Good morning. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're back for chapel at St. Thomas Episcopal School. Grace be unto you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear us as we sing. Open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our opening hymn is number 193. from the Gospel according to Luke. That same day, two of the disciples were walking to the village Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognize who he was. He asked, what's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there, long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happened during the last few days? Jesus said, What has happened? They said, The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth. He was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death and crucified him. And we had all our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it's now the third day since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty, just as the women said, but they didn't see Jesus. And he said to them, so thick-headed, so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe all that the prophet said? 
Don't you see that these things had to happen? That the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? And he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed. He acted as if he were going on, but they pressed him. Stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening. The day is done. So he went in with them. And here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them. Taking the bread, he blessed and broke and gave it to them. At that moment, open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognized him. And then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened up the scriptures for us? They didn't waste a minute. They were up and on their way back to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their friends gathered together, talking away. It's really happened. The master has been raised up. Simon saw him. Then the two went over everything that happened on the road and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. The word of the Lord. This is a story that folks like to tell often. They hear people talk about the story of the road to Emmaus, and this is the story they mean. This story about the disciples who were walking to a nearby town after they had heard the story that Jesus maybe had been raised. They weren't even sure at that point. They hadn't seen him. All they knew was that some of the folks who had gone and looked in the tomb couldn't find him. Can you imagine they had seen him die, they had seen him be placed in the tomb, and they had put a big stone in front of the tomb. And then they came back three days later, a stone was moved, and Jesus wasn't there anymore. So they were walking along talking about how confused they were. And then the part that always confuses me Jesus came up and started walking with them, and they didn't recognize him. Think about that. These are disciples of Jesus. These are people who had been following him for months. These are people who had been with him every day and knew him face to face. And when he came up next to them on the road, they didn't recognize him. Now, maybe they were just so upset or maybe they were confused by everything that had happened. But I would think if, if my friend had died and I saw him again, I would recognize him. And so that makes me go back to one of the other things that I know about Easter, that I know about Jesus being raised from the dead. And that is that Jesus being raised from the dead changed everything and still does change everything. Everything that we thought we knew about the world is different. Everything about our relationship with God is new. Everything in the world has changed because Jesus rose from the dead. Even our relationship with God, our relationship with death itself has changed. And so maybe the point of this story is that in this new world when everything has changed, it takes us a minute even to recognize someone we love very deeply, even to recognize someone we know very well. As we go forward in the rest of our lives, one of the places that we recognize Jesus is when we worship together and share communion. And I think that's what the last part of this story is about. When the disciples meet Jesus and they invite him to join them for dinner, when he takes the bread and says the prayer and breaks it, which you think about it, that's exactly what we do every time we celebrate Eucharist. When he does that, suddenly they recognize him. Suddenly they can see that this was Jesus all along. Suddenly they can see that Jesus is with them. So I challenge you, the next time we're back together and the next time we celebrate communion or the next time you are at mass or communion at your own church, I challenge you to be aware of Jesus being present with you there in the breaking of the bread. We may not always see Jesus on the road when he's walking with us. We know he's always there with us. But hopefully at a special time like communion, we can be sure that we see Jesus in the
breaking for bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now let's say together our school prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Keep us in thy loving care. Guide us through the live long day, in our work and in our play. Keep us pure and sweet and true in everything we say and do. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
grace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.